Yeah, yeah, the check finger trap. I have 150. Impact. Neutralized. 200. Impact. Neutralized. 250. Impact. Just under it. Neutralized. Today is significantly more challenging with this. Yeah. 300. All right. Impact. It was right at the top. Neutralized. They were uh, like right at the, uh, the top. Good. 350. Okay, got it. Uh, right edge, uh, bottom of the plate. Short. Impact. Short. Short. Neutralize. Oh, that's losing steam very quickly. 300, I was dead on. That, I had to aim on top of the uh, bar. Wow. Wow, that's a quick, quick drop off. Yeah. I didn't expect that because I was I, I just started off on the top part of the plate. On at 400. Okay, elevation's good. You're about a target length to the right. Impact. I honestly don't know because it was still moving from your last shot. Yeah. Neutralized. I think honestly we could probably call that a three hit. Okay. We can review it in post. Sure. It was still moving from your last, uh, your previous shot. All right, 450. Okay. Impact. Uh, good elevation, right quadrant. an impact yep yeah the wood yeah I was aiming right a hair above that off the left side off the left side for the elevation to hit gotcha so it's so windy that the camera is like all right I'm on at five uh, okay you hit the target to the right and I think you were high on that target Idea. Impact. The first impact, I, it's so hard to see this. I think it's on the upper right. Impact. Okay. I, I'd say, I mean, honestly, in this wind condition. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the thing, like, it, this would be akin to, like, if we were to apply a handicap for an environmental condition, where we maybe say there's like four or five shots that were taken here that mm -hmm. probably didn't have to be taken if we were shooting in a, shooting, excuse me, shooting in a low wind, um, non-gusty day, yeah. right? So what do you think? I mean, the Bren, this is the Bren 805, so it's, well, you know, this is not the newest model of right. Bren. We know that the 806 is out, although it's like you can't find them anywhere. To me, the 805 is really to, is really interesting. I I think the the 
initially issued these in 2011. Okay. 2012. What did they when replace? I was, sorry? What did they replace with? This guy right here. They replaced it. So in 2011, Chex replaced the VZ58 or VZ58 with the Bren 805. Um, and that was 2011. And then when I was in Afghanistan in 2012, I was at Fob Shank, headed back to one of the GP medium tents after getting a meal. And I saw the Czechs, the Czech MPs, they were shooting in the range. Uh, I walked by and from far away, honestly, I thought it was a G36. I thought it was a G36C with the top rail chopped off, but then I walked close and I saw the charging handle, mm -hmm. and that wasn't a G36. And so I had no idea what this thing was back then. Yeah. Uh, I, it just looked cool. So uh, kind of a cool thing was I may have been one of the first Americans to handle and fire one of these things when, when you know, over purely because they just issued these things. Yeah. Uh, and I, I thought it was really cool, but I know that the Czechs, one of the, one of the complaints they had, the, the paras, uh, was the that it had a lot of sharp surfaces in the middle of the pick rail they left the middle groove open yeah and this creates a lot of sharp yeah like like lightning groove or something to that yeah effect. yeah so the the sharp surfaces I Aleish was telling me that the uh, the paras were upset because it would slice through their equipment mm. I don't know if it was during jumps or not but they would come out with holes and, and all over stuff so they particularly didn't like that. However, accuracy-wise, I think, honestly, it's on par with a lot of the yeah, others. any of the other modern rifles we fired. Yeah, the one thing that I do not like, and, and you see when I run the SCAR, I, I switch the charging handle to the right. I don't know if the, I don't know if the charging handle here, I'm showing the audience, I don't know if it's even closer to the pick rail than the SCAR. So when you, actually when you charge it, it's a knuckle buster that's even worse than the SCAR. Yeah. Now, granted, the EOTech hangs over the side of the rail pretty right. significantly, but even you know when we threw on some of the, like the more slimline mount mm -hmm. optics, like it's you still, still yeah. catch your hand on it. Now, one thing that that makes that kind of makes it even worse is that this is only this is a s slide lock. This this is not an empty mag release. So if you have an empty doesn't work you actually have to charge it you have to insert your mag charge right. it like that yeah so that itself on the manual of arms is a handicap for the 805 yeah it's interesting how they updated their program so quickly from something that was from 1958 yeah to basically the equivalent of a scar yeah one thing though they they do use red dot i have seen them run around with magnifiers yeah but they usually they typically use a mayopta red dot scope on on all of their rifles all in all though, I mean, it, I think it's a solid rifle. Yeah. It's a solid rifle. It's one of those Gen 1 things that I think there are things for them to figure out. Yeah. But at the core of it, it's a cool rifle. Yeah. Nice. Good run. Do you enjoy arguing with other viewers on the internet on which rifle performed better on practical accuracy? Well, we have a solution for you. Go to our Patreon page and scroll down. You'll find the practical accuracy scoreboard where we have ranked and compiled all the data of all the firearms we have tested on the practical accuracy course. Furthermore, it's already separated into the different categories, so you can go back to your argument as quickly as possible. And whether you decide to support us via Patreon, subscription, or just a normal viewer, we thank you. Seven one six is Joe Knight six four six eight patch red con one green to green top copy over. Joe Knight six this is Seven one six Roger over. One six Joe Knight 